Hello everyone, welcome to Low Rent Rick Scale Modelling and this is my uh, complete build and weathering of the Ravel uh, Millennium Falcon, the 1 in 241 scale. It's uh, a level 3, um, great little kit, um, quite cheap, I paid £7 from Hobbycraft for this one. Um, what I've noticed about the, these uh, little kits is, uh, although they're small, the detail is absolutely amazing. Um, which we'll see later when we put the black wash on. Um, so we're going to do the build, we'll zip through it because it's quite a simple build uh, and then we'll get on to the painting and the weathering. Now the kit itself only comprises of uh, 20 parts and uh, as far as quality goes the uh, the sprues are perfect, there's no flash, no overrun. Uh, the, uh, the quality of the plastic is really good. So for that reason I'll not spend too much time detailing the build uh, because it really is an easy one. Um, the main reason I wanted to get hold of these kits is to start doing a little bit more of the sci-fi stuff and uh, a bit of Star Wars specifically because uh, I'm really attracted to the the paints and the finish on the Star Wars things. Um, so what we're going to do with this one is we're going to do a base wash of white. Uh, instead of using the decals I'm going to do the hand painting of the, uh, the miscellaneous red uh, panels and then we're going to use a, a black thin wash to weather over and really bring out the detail that's uh, that's present on the top and bottom of the main body for the thrusters at the back I'm going to paint them in uh, a basic blue and once that's dry I'm going to put a white uh, uh, stripe and like an uneven edge stripe down the center to make it look like it does in the film like the uh, thrusters are active. I'll be using mostly Vallejo paint um, from the model color and the model air range except for the red I'm going to use a bit of the red that was left over from uh, my uh, red arrows kit. So for the first wash, I'm going to use a, a white wash. So uh, I'm going to use Vallejo uh, white, but I'm going to water it down quite a lot, probably to about 40% uh, paint to 60% water, because I want some of that grey to still shine through. And then over the top of that, we're going to put a very thin black wash to really make all that detail pop out. When you're putting the white wash on, if um, if you find it's gone on a bit thick in an area, just apply water directly to the model. The quality of the plastic is so good that you don't need to prime. As I keep saying, I'm not against primer, but I find that using these paints in this way, using a very, very thin coat, and then layering up thin coats, that I never really use primer or never need it. But if primer is your thing, you go right ahead. The wash is so thin you can see quite a lot of the uh, underlying plastic still quite through it which usually um, usually happens when you're doing multiple thin layer coats but this is something we actually want here um, the model not being white but being grey um, those levels between the actual base plastic the white wash and then the black wash will give it quite a good colour There is so much detail on the uh, plastic on the model that you will have to move the brush around quite a lot to get into all the nooks and crannies. What you do want to do is uh, to make it a thin coat but make it quite even so that when we come to apply the black wash over the top we don't get it to stick too much in one area and wash off on the others. That was the first part of the live stream complete, so here we go with a seamless transition into part two and a quick t-shirt change. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the thruster part at the back 
and uh, I'm going to paint the white stripe in to, uh, to simulate that the thrusters go in like you see in the films and then I'm going to fit the uh, shield which um, unfortunately on the model doesn't quite fit so it's going to take a little bit of jiggery pokery to get it to fit in correctly So I've just added a little bit more to the uh, white wash, a little bit patchy after it's dried overnight. And now I'm just going to, uh, by hand, I'm going to paint a centre white line down the blue. So once that's got the clear shield over it, that'll look quite effective. Um, then we're going to touch up the white a little bit more and then uh, give the... Uh, the stand which the kit comes with the stand as you can see there uh, it's first coat of black so that's going to take about three coats so I'll zip through those really fast when the stand needs to paint in so now I'm going to look at fitting the clear shield over the thrusters now I've noticed that the the, uh, the shield itself the curve doesn't quite match the curve of the model so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bit of super glue in the center so I'm going to try and fix the center first let it set a bit and then uh, bend the ends around to match up just gotta be a little bit careful using the super glue around the clear parts because if you use too much it'll get onto the plastic and it'll frost it up So now that the centerpiece is set, I'm going to use the Revell contactor on each end uh, and then think what I'll do is I'll have to clamp it up uh, and then let that set uh, so it'll be under tension. So it'll need clamping so it sets nice and even. Now fitting the last two pieces uh, before we bring the uh, two halves together, get it stuck down and then clamped up ready for uh, the final paint so I'm about to uh, hand paint in all the red panels uh, if you can see here when the light bounces off the surface the uh, the whitewash is taken really well and you're able to see um, the detail really popping out I hope the resolution is good enough for you to see if I can get the light to just shine across the surface you'll get a better idea of the actual detail of this model which is really incredible for something of its size so before I do the red panels it's time to put both halves together and then get it clamped up uh, and then I'll do the, uh, the I'll hand paint in the red panels I didn't really want to use the decals because I wanted to choose the the level of uh, red myself and get the uh, get the panels where I wanted them to be Of course the biggest uh, challenge of painting the red is not so much getting the steady hand, it's uh, over or under doing it. So um, I'm going to trust myself to get the, uh, the level of panels correct. Um, I'm using a Dalla Rowney spotter brush, uh, absolutely incredible brushes. I got it from uh, Hobbycraft, it was like £3.30. Um, and it's really up my game with detail, it's really good for the, uh, the 176 scale figures and anything really small and delicate like this because the end of the brush is quite stiff but also quite small so it allows really good delicate painting for somebody who's not had much experience of it
So here's a bit of a close up of uh, of that brush. Um, I really do recommend you get one. It's such a good brush. So now I'm happy that in my mind I've got the uh, the level of red panels just about right. We're about to start with the first of a couple of very thin, very watery black washes to pop out the details. You can see straight away that the black start to bring out the uh, the detail on the on the skin. Now to paint in the red panels on the underside, again watching that I don't go too far or don't do too little. For the exhaust I'm going to use some uh, Ravel uh, black weathering powder um, if you've not used weathering powder before one of the beauties of it is um, you can make it as pronounced or as light as you like but if you're not happy with it you can just add more water and it sort of reactivates the powder and you can wash it all off so uh, I like to use it on things like exhaust to give a nice sooty effect uh, but also for the fact if you don't know quite where you're going to go with it that you can also reverse your decision just with a, a good brush full of water Now we're going to go over the whole thing with uh, the final black washes. Um, don't worry if it goes on too thick. I'll be adding a lot more water to thin it out. And then we'll see what the effect is like at the end. So that's the washes done. Just a quick touch up on that exhaust because I see that it's uneven and uh, that will be it complete. So um, let me know in the comments have you built one of these before? How did I do on it? I think uh, I'm really pleased with the, the final outcome. Um, once I got it set on the table and got a good photo of it, I was really happy with it. And I'll be doing the X Wing Fighter very soon because I've got one of those too. So thanks for watching. Please leave a like or a comment or give us a give us a subscribe a very small channel so every little bit helps please do check out scale modeling for everyone on facebook we're a very small group but we'd be really happy to have you thank you very much for watching and i'll see you for the next one